Pay attention, Brian. Today I'm going to teach you how to build this barn wood door. Look at how dope it is. Okay, believe it or not, you too can build a door like this. And I'm gonna show you how. Okay, I need a drill. This is the tools that we're gonna need. I'll just use an impact, that's what I use. And I need a Robbie bit. Um, and of course the tackle box is here and look at that. This is the first time ever that something I know I have hundreds of is actually on site where I thought it would be. It is an amazing feeling. It's surreal, it's unrealistic, and I feel unworthy. But look at that brand new Robbie bit. And it's a DeWalt pit and a DeWalt drill. How does that make you feel? Kind of makes me feel funny. So the obvious first step is we, we do our total width and our total length. We've already done the casing for the door to frame it out, make it look nice. But we might have got lucky. So we'll call that. That's 32 and 5 eighths. And then we'll go up here. Uh, 32 and... 9 16th, which is very close for this uh, barn style door. So we're gonna take that as 32 and a half. <laughs> 81 and a half. 81 and a half. Luckily the framing was good. So we have 32 and a half by 81 and a half. So now that we have our measurements, we got our 32 and a half uh, width, and we got our 81 and a half height. Uh, what we have to do is we're going to take our pine trim that we're going to be using and it's uh, 1 by 12 pine. It's undressed, so it's exactly 7 eighths of an inch thick. So I'm going to have one on either side. Um, so 7 eighths of an inch times 2 is 1 and 3 quarters. We also want an inch for hardware on both sides, one for the uh, hinge side and one for the latch side. So 2 and 3 quarters is my total that I'll be deducting from that measurement. Um, and that gives me, um, come on, quick maths. Two foot, five and three quarters of an inch for that. So that's my rough width. Well, that's my rough width for the frame that we're going to build. We're going to cut our frame to two foot, five and three quarters. And then for height, we'll do the same thing. Take 81 and a half and then subtract uh, the two and three quarters and that will give us uh, six foot six and three quarters of an inch so that'll be our rough width so now we have to build a frame we're going to use two by fours and we're going to build it six foot six and three quarters by two foot five and three quarters we're going to take a couple of three inch screws and here's how we're going to put our picture frame together i'm going to go down below the half mark of my picture frame Well, this one's advised that you pre-drill it because you don't want to split it. We're going low and we're going close to the edge. So we go into the half mark. I'm going to get those nice, exactly where they got to be. Okay, you see that? Just below the half mark. The whole head is below the half mark. That's what we're looking for. Let's go do the same thing on all four sides. Nothing crazy other than this. And then we can toenail it in. Look at that, magic just happened. Did a little tap, tap, tap a -roo, and uh, now we're flush. Now, so we just want to check corner to corner on the diagonal to make sure they're the same. That's how we know if our structure here is square, which we know our opening is square. So we definitely want our gate to be square to match. Now in this case, we got seven foot quarter inch. And then let's see what we got here. Yeah, seven foot half inch, so it's very close actually. Have your guy hold the cameraman, hold on to that corner. Hold it tight. We gotta drive this corner back by an eighth of an inch. Doesn't take much. Just kind of coax it over. Now let's check. Sometimes if you're building on the ground, it's as simple as just stepping on it. There you go. Okay, so now we're square. Okay, so. The middle brace is crucial to making sure your gate doesn't sag and the correct way to do it is to go from the bottom of the brace will be on the hinge side, the top of the brace will be on the latch side and that is the only way to do it. Any other way your gate will sag. Come here. Before you move this 2x4 you want to make four different marks, okay? The first series of marks is going to be here. You're going to mark each side of this and then the outside as well. Of this then you're going to mark underneath on this the actual board itself here 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 
here. Make sure I mark this as bottom. And there, you can mark top, but if you know where the bottom is, you know where the top is. So just make sure you make a mark for where you know your bottom is for when you're done cutting. What you want to do is set this saw here to three quarters of an inch. Something very close to it, I'll tell you that. A little bit more than three quarters. Now, what we're gonna do is basically cut a half lap out of the gate frame itself. So, watch closely. You notice how there's no sparks flying? That's why we set the screw below the halfway mark so that we could cut halfway through and we don't ruin our blade by hitting the screws. So. Now we remove the material by just slapping it. This doesn't have to look perfect at this point, the face of it, but it just has to be flat. The only thing that's gonna see it is the lap joint on the other side when we squish them together. We're basically practicing the same theory that we did for the half lap on the gate frame and just doing the same thing on our cross brace to match it on the marks we had made earlier. And uh, this part can be tedious, boring, mind numbing, uh, probably I just assume boring to watch because it's actually boring to do. So we just, the idea is just to hog off the material. You can really try it any way you like, but I find that just cutting a random series of slits and then prying and hammering and chiseling afterwards is the best bet for this technique. Um, and the reason is I just, I kind of like the half lap better than the toenail. Uh, and then uh, more of this, it's just nonsense, just getting the wood gone. Um, I didn't have a very sharp chisel today, which, you know, for soft wood, you really need a very, very sharp chisel. But for what we're doing, it, the perfection wasn't the game really. It's just like remove the material so we can get the two pieces flat together. You know, I figured I'd keep this in even though it's boring as, as ever, but I uh, figured, you know, maybe you'd enjoy it. We know we marked the bottom with the B. Now where is that? This is why we mark it. We get confused. You see it. There it is. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if this lap joint fits. And there you have it. Nice little lap. And here, since we have a nice little lap where both pieces are an inch and a half total, we have inch and a quarter screws. We just put them straight in, laminate those two pieces together. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We flip it over. And here's the fun part. We just take our uh, circular saw and cut along the edge of the gate on both sides. Get them all trimmed up real nice. Um, I just, this is kind of the fun part for me is like, Hey, the work's already done. We just get a cut. Awesome. 29, seven, eights. So we're going to cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces at 29 and seven, eights. Well, what I'm doing here is I don't really trust the manufacturer's edge or the mill edge, um, to be square. So I give that a little snip, then I'll measure my measurement and start cutting pretty simple stuff. That's actually great. Now I'm using black, black wood screws in this case because we are going to paint this all black afterwards and we could get away with any color, but if we're going to paint it, you might as well use a black wood screw. That way you don't have to worry about the paint chipping off in the future. And here's more boring footage of me assembling the gate. I figured I had to leave it in for continuity. Like, I guess people want to see the end result. So uh, we're just... Uh, yeah, we're just screwing boards into a gate. So at this point, you know, you could probably go to lunch and have Brian finish it for you, but I figured I'd see it through. I'd also like to apologize for the glare in this video. It's mid-November when we shot it, and it was 20 degrees in Canada, which was in Toronto, which was outrageous. I think that's like 86 for the Americans that are watching. Um, so the sun was in our eyes the entire day because the sun's sort of low and warm. 
it was an interesting experience. Um, again, I left this footage in here just so, you know, you could see what I'm doing is taking these black wood screws, and these are wood screws, not drywall screws, and we're screwing the boards down. And then we are going to paint it. This is actually an exterior stain, and the color is a limousine leather. I pronounce it like that for your enjoyment. Oh, oh. And uh, basically, this is a stain that prevents the untreated pine from rotting and makes it look cool at the same time. Why is it all pressure treated black, you ask? I actually don't know the answer to that question. Okay. So we got, again, 29 and 7 eighths, like we knew, for our width. And then our height for our trim is going to be 79 and 1 eighth width, length, and height. And we do some rips to the width, and then we cut our length and our height out. Uh, we miter the edges so we get a nice beveled picture frame edge, and uh, we attach it to the gate. Now, uh, the reason I do this, I just find this this style of trim looks just really finished and makes a otherwise rustic looking gate look, you know, refined and intentional. So it's just the way I do it. I hide the cut edges this way. And this is why I took that extra inch and three quarters off of my rough opening earlier, if that helps bring things full circle. Uh, I hope it does. Other than that, we just use, uh, you know, as many screws as we really can and uh, tighten her up, make it good. And go from there. The painting is not the fun part for me. Although I think some people might find it satisfying to watch just the, the, the color transformation from the instant, you know, but for me, um, I'd rather go to lunch and let you take care of this, to be honest with you. Okay, so in our case, the hinge pins are gonna be facing the outside, which is contradictory to most people's belief systems about doors because the security factor, if the, pinches, or if the hinge pin is on the outside, you could just knock the pins, rip the door off and go in. So this is actually like a barn door shed and we're not actually even putting a lock on the shed. The, the backyard's already secure. If someone breaks in here, it's gonna be just as easy to break into anything else. But so in, our, in this case, the hinge pins will be on the outside and that's the way we're doing it. So what I do is, I measure something consistent. So for, for this case, I'll do six inches this way. I'll do the same six inches there. You take one of these regular style hinges, fold them like that. Okay, put them at the six inch mark. You can mark the piece if you want. To me, it doesn't make sense, but okay. So I actually use a three inch screw and the tiny little screws that these hinges come with to me, in this case, they're useless. And the reason they're useless is they're not even bigger than the trim. And I'm not gonna hang the entire weight of the door on simply the trim alone, because that would be irresponsible. I think, you know, a two, a two inch or a two and a half would work, but I got lots of threes, so that's what we're gonna use. Good. All right, let's pop it up. It's gonna bring it over. All right, you got the whole thing by yourself. Good, good, good. Hey, up there. Holy crap. Okay, so we're gonna go down just a little. Not too much. All right, now hold on to it. Another screw up at the top. So damn precise. All right. Back up. We're going to test it out. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Feels good. Doesn't it? Doesn't it feel good as a participation? You get the participation award because you watch the whole thing. Check it out. Take a step back now. You need to appreciate it as art. Step back. 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 Don't worry about that stuff. Okay. Now let's have a look. Yeah. Looks cool. And I like to use these handles for, for gates because they kind of have an interior aesthetic with the durability for outdoors. Don't worry about that. You're focused on me right now. Come on. Let's open this package up. I'm sure you have a better way to open it, I don't. Open her up. All little bits in here are useful, so you don't wanna you don't wanna get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Save that, save that, save that. Save that. Go wrap it up. Okay, pick this stuff up off the ground, you Neanderthal. Make sure that latch is over. I might latch over quite nicely, just like that. Okay. So let's, let's clamp that down. Come over here. Draw. I'm just gonna make a mark here. Make a mark here. Okay. 
Now watch me here. You're gonna actually see the, the work here. Okay. okay, so that went on, that goes on there. Okay, you can measure, but because I'm using a larger drill bit, we don't have to. Here's a pro tip. When you see that happening, back it out. Going in from this side, that's how you prevent blowout. Infamous Phillips bit. I know the Phillips bit is terrible. Please, just, just bear with me here. Okay, now you have that pin, push that through. Now, often, it depends on the thickness of your gate, you're gonna have to shave that pin. Now, let me find out here. Based on the thickness of this one, whether or not we have to shave it. So let's find out. And we are in luck. It's the perfect thickness. We won't have to shave it. The screws, which is atrocious. Man, Phillips screws got to be the worst invention to ever take off. Okay, so let's lift that up a bit. And let's send it home. Going nice and easy so we don't strip these things because they are prone to stripping very easily. That's what they do. It's in their nature. When they go too fast or the threads won't catch. It's kind of like a... I like to go nice and slow so you get a nice, you know, firm grab at it. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Now we go to the other side. What are you shrugging about? Just kind of shrugging over here. I'm shrugging. Up. I'm going to shrug me, buddy. That was weird. Mm-hmm. A lot of DIY people are intimidated by gates with mechanisms that work on both sides. But uh, this one is really simple. You see how easy that was to install. Gap, when we close. Okay, so I know that that's the bottom of my pin. Watch yourself here, Mr. Sir. Thank you. And the remaining three screws, who would have thunk? Three remaining holes. What I do is I line my pin up with the bottom of that. Poke this out a little, and then I put my screws in. Start with one screw, and then let's test the close. I think we can come up a tiny bit more just to add a little extra something, something to it, and then we'll be done. Straighten that. Straighten out, fly right. There we go. Okay. And the moment of truth. Boom! Yes! Now take a step back. Come on. Appreciate this with me. Don't make me do this alone. Come on, get a view of the whole door. There you go. Look at that. It's done. I have to direct the thing as well, but hey. Um, wasn't that easy? 